The Hamilton Conservation Authority started to acquire a large amount of land in the Dundas Valley area in the late 1960s, early 1970s. Uh, whereas by today we have over 2,500 acres of land accumulated in the Dundas Valley Conservation Area. And the Hermitage property uh, is central um, to this piece of land uh, that we've been able to acquire. The Hermitage ruins um, and the estate has, has a very colorful history and to, uh, it, it is uh, interesting to school groups, it's interesting to uh, people like myself, and then it's interesting to people who have a, an interest in, uh, I guess, what you might call the supernatural. Um, these ruins have been here for a long time, and if it takes a long time to cultivate a ghost, maybe these ruins have been here long enough to, to cultivate an interest in, uh, in ghosts or whatever, and certainly uh, with, um, Auto Ives and the Lover's Lane connection, and uh, there, there's, there's grounds for people starting stories. This is where the haunted house is. What's left of it? Every owner of the house is met with a tragic end. <laughs> and so they look for souls to consume on the night of a full moon. Shut up! There is a street in Ancaster known as Lover's Lane, and its legend is connected to the Hermitage. It is connected to two people that once lived there, the coachman and the niece of Colonel Otto Ives. Because of their stations in life, they had to keep their love a secret. But the coachman was a bit of a romantic, if you will, and soon he grew so brave as to ask the Colonel's permission to have her hand in marriage. Well, of course, the Colonel did not want his niece marrying a coachman. So he demanded that the coachman went back to the carriage house and pack his things and leave. But despite being a romantic, he was also a bit of a die-hard romantic. No one decides whom to love but your own heart. If I am barred from you by the laws of this life, then so be it. I shall not beat a heart that mourns your absence. My life and my fate are bound to you, for I am eternally yours. He went back to the carriage house that day, but not to pack his things. If he could not have his one true love, well, there was no reason to live at all. So that day when he went back to the carriage house, he grabbed a rope from the wall, stood on top of a wheelbarrow filled with manure, fastened a noose around a beam in the ceiling, and hung himself. Well, the next morning when the colonel was waiting for his carriage, forgetting that he had fired his coachman, went back there to find out what was taking so long. And when he opened that door, he saw the coachman's lifeless body hanging from the rafters. Now, a sight like this would scare or frighten most people, but the colonel was a military man, and suicide was a cowardly way to die. He was disgusted at the sight he saw before him. Now, legend has it that on moonlit nights, people have spotted the spirit of the coachman walking from Lover's Lane to the Hermitage Ruins. Quite often, the question comes up from our uh, visitors. You know, are the stories true? Well, nobody can answer those kind, of, uh, those kind of questions. It really comes down, I think, to what a person is comfortable with. Shh! Have we made contact? Shut up. I heard some movement. I'll prime the ghost trap. <laughs> All right, forget it. Well, the Hermitage uh, is a, a living reminder of people that actually occupied a spectacular space 150 years ago. Why the, the, the space, this wonderful uh, park, survived, why those ruins survived, speak to me as to uh, the values of our society and, and uh, that what can we learn and to have a, a tangible visible, touchable uh, reminder of another era, I think helps people in general ground themselves so that they realize they're not the first person to occupy this world or won't be the last. And there's, there's things to learn about from, from the past. Canada has a lot of history to tell, believe it or not. And uh, I, I just think it's very important that we start uh, relaying and retelling these stories and our history 
um, in kind of more of an entertaining and cinematic way like we've sort of done here. I think it's time that Canada sort of stepped it up a little bit and, you know, started telling these stories before, just like the Hermitage, before they all get forgotten and no one ever really knows or knew they existed. Great. Okay, so, uh, where are we heading to? The Hermitage, it's a... Conservation area, where old people and nature walks are in abundance. <laughs> they say it's one of the most haunted places in Canada. It's very important to keep the history in line with all of the superstitious, uh, legends that have been reported over the years um, because when you're doing uh, research on a show like this uh, it's very hard to distinguish what is actually legend and what is fact because it's just it happened so long ago um, but one of the little known facts that we didn't uh, feature in the program is that there is actually two separate hermitage uh, structures built on the same property the first one which was built back in the early 1800s uh, by the Reverend George Sheet as we explained in the prologue also owned by Otto Ives inhabited by the coachman and the niece uh, there is nothing left of those that hermitage at all it's completely leveled so the hermitage that we feature is the second hermitage built in the later 1800s by the Leith family. Um, now the Leiths we don't make mention of at all in the show because there really is no superstitious activity uh, attached to them uh, in the very least at all. So uh, the ruins that you see to there today and in the show are the Hermitage number two. The first owner of the Hermitage land was by Reverend George Sheedy, who had moved to Ancaster to build a church. Tragically, mere months before the church's completion, the Reverend passed away. The very first service that church ever held was in honor of Reverend George Sheedy. The uh, Hermitage ruins are the second Hermitage, and that's uh, uh, built with locally quarried the limestone, uh, uh, Credit Valley stone, I believe, for uh, some of the window uh, placings. So uh, it, it's the second one. A very uh, wealthy. Those are. The people that uh, built the Hermitage, the second Hermitage, well, even the first, but particularly the second, were very wealthy. So within the, her the Hermitage were fine art, beautiful furniture, all of that china that was uh, very uh, rare, expensive uh, stuff. There was an unfortunate uh, fire. It was, I believe, in October uh, 1943. The newspaper coverage uh, at the time referred to the uh, occupant, uh, sole occupant of the house at the time as the retiring Mrs. Alma Dick Lauder. Actually, she wasn't uh, that retiring. She was uh, one of the real characters in uh, greater Hamilton history in the late 19th century and early 20th century. And indeed, the fire uh, reportedly broke out at a party at the house, so it wasn't like uh, the Hermitage was uh, you know, totally isolated at, at all. Ever been to the Hermitage? Yeah, I used to pick wildflowers with my grandma there. <laughs> Going during the day doesn't count. It's at night when the real sightings go down. So the idea behind the show is to find any Canadian location uh, that has a rich history and some kind of local uh, legend or superstitious activity attached to it. Um, to create enough interest to showcase uh, enough of these little gems like the Hermitage that we have scattered all over the country. Um, it's just a matter of finding them and uh, for uh, telling them in a cinematic and entertaining way uh, so that we can kind of generate some interest for our country because Canadians are very humble when it comes to the stories we have to tell and we just don't tell them quite enough. Um, now, the thing about the community which it resides and in modern times is also very important. Uh, so for the Hermitage in Ancaster, uh, it is one of the most popular teen hangout spots for various activities. Um, now it's obviously closed at night, but the reality is it happens and kids go down there night after night. While we were filming there, a group of four to six, seven kids. Uh, walking around the ruins, walking around the forest, doing literally exactly what our characters are doing on the show. It was in 1976 when I first uh, had the occasion to visit the Dundas Valley Conservation Area. Um, I grew up in Toronto, and when I came here, I thought, wow, I wish I knew that this place existed sooner. I still remember the first time I drove down Sulphur Springs Road. 
Um, it was a paradise. If you're interested in learning more about the ghost walks that we run, especially the one at the Hermitage Ruins, please visit ghostwalks.com or hauntedhamilton.com for more information.